I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Starring in her first motion picture. She's a rock video queen on the hit list of a maniacal gangster. And Tymok, a champion searching for the power of the glow. This is Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. The movie that has the music of Stevie Wonder, Smokey Robinson, The Temptations, Sarita, Rockwell, Charlene, Willie Hutch, Elfie, Vanity, and DeBarge. Plus all the power, glamour, and excitement of Motown. Catch the show. Get the glow. Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon, directed by Michael Schultz, rated PG-13. Starts Friday, March 22nd at a theater near you. Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about to another review? This is another PayPal request from Vaughn Davis. And of the three he sent, this is definitely the one I like the most. But thank you so much for the requests and the donations. If anyone's ever interested in requesting reviews, videos, movie topics, whatever, you can do so via my PayPal directly. Or you feel free to join my Patreon. Either way is fine. The links are down below. If not, no worries. But... One of the films he wanted me to talk about was The Last Dragon, or Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. And watch it again. I liked it. It's fun. It's got a little bit of style to it. it has a hip soundtrack. Uh, the cast do their jobs well. It's definitely not a movie that you're supposed to take seriously. It's, in a way, a little bit of a love letter to Bruce Lee you know, and those type of movies. Tymac or Tymac. I know he didn't act a tremendous amount after this. He was a martial artist, and then from what I understand, he learned a little bit of acting on set. He did fine for what he was supposed to do. I didn't mind him. Vanity is his DJ who sort of becomes a love in not sort of, but she becomes a love interest for Tymac or Bruce Leroy Green, as he's called. Bruce Leroy. Vanity, she was in quite a few films back in the day. She was beautiful and not a bad actress either. She was also in Action Jackson. Julius Terry the Third. I enjoy him. I remember him from the TV show The Adventures of Bristol County Jr. Who he was kind of facing off against Bruce Campbell. Then they became partners. And I enjoyed him quite a bit in that. He's here as Show Enough, the Shogun of Harlem. At times, he's wearing what looks like football pads. He's got the crazy hair. And he's definitely enjoying himself. You say he's being campy over the top, but yeah, he's having a lot of fun with his role. He's being the, you know, show enough. Then what's my name? Show enough. Other recognizable people, Mike Starr is one of the bad guys. He's the guy in Dumb and Dumber who says, guys, guys, when they do the most annoying sound in the world. Ernie Reyes Jr., who would be Tino and Secret of the Ooze, the Ninja Turtles 2, Surf Ninjas, Red Sonia. He's here in a bit role as one of Time Out's students. Uh, William H. Macy has a little brief role as someone who works with Vanity. Because the plot of the film, Time Out is training, 
I do like the, the main song. You are the last dragon. Leash the power of the glow. Da -da -na -na. Very entertaining, catchy song. I would say it's the best song in the soundtrack, but the other songs work well for what they're supposed to what they're supposed to be. <clears throat> But he's training, he's with this master. The master has said, hey, you've learned everything I could teach you. The gist of the story you find out for the character is that he does. He needs to believe himself because the master tells him you have all that you need. But you know, Leroy is going, no, I, I need something else. I have much more to learn. So his master gives him this medallion. You know, Bruce Lee had this. And go find this other person. You kind of find out that per that person doesn't even exist. It's because he has the power within. He just needs to believe himself. Which he does by the end of the movie, of course. Meanwhile, Vanity has his show. What was the name of the show? It was... God, what the hell the show was called? Seventh Heaven. I see DJ, but they call VJ. Laura. She has a show. Our main bad guy wants her to put his girlfriend's new music video on the show. And part of me went, you're doing all this just to put your shitty girlfriend's music video on there? First off, I'm sure there's plenty of other people, plenty of other shows you would pay enough money to show your fucking music video. That's number one. Number two, who gives a shit about the music video? There's plenty of other avenues to get money off of. So I always thought that was kind of a weird plan for the villain. That the main reason he's doing it is this music video. And then if I was Vandy, I'm like, just show the music video. They'll see how much she fucking sucks ass. And the guy will make a fool out of himself. And then afterward, you could tell the whole story, make fun of the guy. Or whatever. I mean... Either just play the fucking music video or just find some other place to play the fucking music video. I mean, really? This is what we're all fighting about? So that was a bit weird. I, I can't say I love the film to death. I did not grow up with the movie, so it's not a childhood favorite. Julius Terry III is fun in his personality. He's not much of a martial artist. When he tries to do martial arts, the, the main physical villain, it's pretty clunky. But he has an entertaining personality, so I'll forgive her for that. Time out. I thought he did fine in his acting. Tries a little bit of Bruce Lee acting, but not too much. Very soft-spoken, trying to find the non-violent answer to the problems. A lot of Bruce Lee footage, a lot of references. You even have sort of what one would do on YouTube where they take clips of a movie and they make a little music video out of when <laughs> Ty Mock and Vanity go on a date and she takes him to this place and she turns on music. It's like a whole clip show of Bruce Lee made to this music. I'm like, well, that's kind of ahead of its time because that is something that someone would do on YouTube. Yeah, there were music videos, but they didn't really do that where it was just movie clips. But this did that, so I, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. And the actors did their jobs well. When Time Out fights, it's nothing remarkable. It's nothing amazing compared to Van Damme, early Steven Seagal, Jeff Wincott, Jeff Speakman, Gary Daniels, Lauren Avedon, others. But he did fine. He did fine in his fight scenes for what it needed to be. Not amazing, not great, but you know, fine. One part he's looked like a ninja. He rescues the Vandia quite a few times. I did see I don't like using the word cheesy. I, this is a film if someone uses, I can't understand that. It definitely has that vibe. I mean you get to the ending, which I would say my favorite part when he does realize he's got the power with him, the power of the glow. At each time he hits the villain, this cartoon sparks fly. Pew, pew, pew. 
that's definitely memorable as the song got the power of the glow and he keeps hitting kicking Julius Terry's character just yeah this fun looking cartoonish literal cartoon animation sparks fly up uh, that was fun and it shows that the movie's not meant to be serious I mean the guy catches a bullet with his teeth because he's got the power of the glow and that was something that one of the New York legends urban legends that the villain Julius Terry mentioned earlier in the film and when I say villains yeah Julius Terry's the show enough then you have this dweeby looking guy who wants his wife's music video to be up there I'm kind of hesitating because I'm wondering like okay what is it that I didn't truly love about the movie I wish Tom Ott beat up show enough a little bit more during that fight scene kind of does a couple moves and that's it I would have liked a, a bit more of him kicking his ass maybe because I was enjoying those <laughs> graphics quite a bit There's a part of me that wonders, like, it it doesn't want to be a parody, but sometimes it almost seems like a parody, but yet at the same time it doesn't want to be a parody. So it's kind of walking this tightrope of, there's some really goofy things, but at the same time it doesn't seem like it wants to be a full-out parody, like, I'm going to get you sucker. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It does create kind of a weird feeling for me watching the flick where sometimes I'm not sure if I'm supposed to laugh. Like, it's a goofy film. It's not that I'm not sure if I want to laugh, but... Um, well, actually, this is the best. The tonal whiplash more goofy than endearing. Well, a lot of people find it endearing. I mean, I enjoy the film, but for some reason, it's not something I really love, love. I watch over and over again. But at the same time, it was an easy enough watch. It didn't feel that long. You know, Time Mock and Vanity did fine in the two leads. Like I said Julius Terry can't really buy his fighting, but his acting, his personality was a lot of fun. Maybe just like the plot, the, the stakes, I'm going, this is all just to put this bitch's music video up. Just put the fucking music video up. Or don't put the fucking music video up. This, what's the big fucking deal? So maybe it's like the, the plot. Again, if it was more, if it's supposed to be comedic, I wouldn't say there's a lot of moments I laughed at. More... Like the, the fight at the end. Some of Julius J. Terry the third's performance. So uh, yeah, there's some points uh Parmi almost wishes it was f more full on comedy, but maybe that was lose the appeal for a lot of people. I don't know what it is. Maybe the fight scenes, I wish they had that little extra oomph like a Bruce Lee would have or other martial arts performers had. But it's like, okay, we can't go too much because was this rated PG? What was the rating for this movie? I don't even know if they'll say here. Because it's, I don't know if I want to say it's holding back on it. It says PG-13. I don't even see the 13. I mean, I would see PG at best. I don't see PG-13, but that's just me. But it says I'm to be PG-13. But overall, it's a fun enough movie. It's an entertaining enough flick. It's not something I rewatch over and over again. But like I said, it does seem like a little bit of a nice ode to Bruce Lee, a little bit of a love letter with the various mentions of Bruce Lee, how Time Ott's character is such a big fan and respects Bruce Lee and loves him to death. 
And I did in the moment I mentioned where she vanity's trailer liked a music video of Bruce Lee for him to watch and enjoy and get pumped up viewing. Leroy Green's hero is Bruce Lee. So that, that was a bit charming. I'll say that was a bit charming and endearing. I, I can say that. And that's the thing. I think a lot of this film for people, they found it rather endearing um, be, because of elements where, hey, Time Lock wasn't that bad. And, you know, the soundtrack and some of the style of the way certain sets look, like Vanity's work where she worked at. A little bit of the set design there, and again, some of the humorous aspects, like the the fight scene at the end. So maybe it's that endearing quality, that '80s fun quality that has made it last throughout the years. There's something about it doesn't make me love it to death like other people do, but it's still an enjoyable romp. It's an enjoyable enough romp that. Most people who watch this room have already seen the movie, and if not, you like 80s films, you like martial arts films, you like hip soundtracks, a fun vibe to it. It's not 100% serious, but it's also not parody. Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's fun. I wouldn't say a lot of fun for me, but it's fun. But either way, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.